Rub up your engines! Ninety-one five hundred SL Mercedes. The guy's got like fifteen hundred dollars in it. And hey, boy, did he get his money's worth? Now, back in the day when these were made, Mercedes made solid cars, and they were state of the art. For example, this thing puts out three hundred twenty-six horsepower. The same year, Mustang convertible put out 225 horsepower. So, <laughs> these were state of the art back in the day. They're still a fast car, but back in the day, they were state of the art. The problem with Mercedes, at least for the American market, is they're not made in Germany anymore. They come from all over the place. Alabama, you name it, different countries, not from Germany like this one was made. And the Germans took these things seriously. The SL stands for Sport Lichter, which is Sport Light. You got a smaller car, and it's certainly sporty with this big old V8. The only plastic stuff is the air box with the air filter. Metal, metal. They made these things strong back in the day. Well, if you didn't know, Mercedes was really the first company to mass produce stupid plastic radiators. Well. He just got this a couple months ago, and the plastic radiator was leaking, so you can see he's got a real nice aluminum one now. He found that on eBay for a hundred bucks. You get a car like this, you can see he doesn't have much money into it, less than $2,000. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's still parts of these things around. People like them because it's the true roadster. It's got a big V8 engine, and it's rear wheel drive. And of course, the top comes off. Now, this isn't the original top, but strangely enough, he found the original owner who happened to run a funeral home, hence the black Mercedes, I guess, you know? <laughs> and he has the original top in the stand. And he said he's probably gonna go pick that up. Why not have a match on this thing? Back in 91, having 326 horsepower was really something. Totally dependable. The transmissions on these things are totally dependable. As you can see, this thing's set up. It's got dual electric fans on it and a fan that runs off the fan belt. I can call it a fan belt because it runs by a belt, right? These babies don't overheat because they've got all kinds of cooling. Listen to the quality of an old Mercedes. Listen to that door. They're like tanks. Even the original wheels are in pretty good shape. Look at that. Solid. They were the first ones to really go to nice alloy wheels, not just stupid hubcaps. The leather's still in pretty good shape, although there have been some heavy people sitting in it. He's not heavy, but I guess the funeral owner must have been, because that sunk down a little. But check it out. This is a barn find. This baby's only got 94,000 miles on it. The Mercedes, insanely complex heated and air conditioning system. These things are just wacko city and it does have the original mercedes benz radio am fm and yes a tape deck Ooh, look at that a tape deck for those of you who don't know what a tape deck is a cassette tape some electromagnetic stuff and it played music <laughs> i'm so old i remember the year that people bought more tapes than they bought records <laughs> it's a true sports car it does not have seats in the back for real people maybe a cat and some dogs they can fit in there and yes it's german ingenuity they even have electric seats with memory on the driver's side and on the passenger side Ooh, what luxury now, the only real downside of these cars this is a 91 so it's obd1 it's not obd2 so under the hood you gotta have a mechanic who knows about these things and has some pretty special equipment you have to have mercedes-benz equipment for these old ones since they're obd1 and not two you can't plug a regular scanner in i used to own a 300e and it's the same type of basic system you learn how these mechanical fuel injection system work and the advantage of a mechanical fuel injection system is this. These are all pressure lines. Got an electronic fuel pump and stuff and some electronic controls. The main fuel injection system is mechanical. You don't have to deal with all this computer stuff. Electric solenoids breaking down because it's a mechanical system. If you keep it clean, keep changing the filters, don't have problems with these things, they're pretty bulletproof systems. But of course, if you buy one, since it's a 91, it's old as the hills, and let's say it's been sitting a while, man, you're probably gonna take the whole thing apart and clean everything, because the gasoline will clog and gel up, and all those little tiny mechanical holes will be clogged up, and you're gonna have to rebuild the whole thing. In this case, the thing was obviously being driven because it's not all clogged up. Since it's older in OBD1, it also isn't as complex either. Now, you got a regular alternator. It's not a computer-controlled alternator. 
you got a regular power steering pump. It's not an electronic power steering pump. You got a brake master cylinder with a regular vacuum booster on it. But as I said, it has an insanely complex heating and air conditioning system. And all the servos and everything on these, man alive. They are complicated. And there's the oddest thing of it all. They copied a Chrysler design. <laughs> they took one of the wackiest Chrysler design, HVAC, AC, vacuum activated system, and Mercedes decided, oh, let's make our copy of it. It's way too complex. When they break, they can cost a fortune to fix, but hey, it's a convertible. Just take the top off. <laughs> it gets too hot outside. Take this baby for a spin. Even the hood sounds solid. Wacky seat belt, as you can see. Look, the connector's way down there. I mean, it still works. That's the Germans for you. If they can do something weird, they'll do it. It still works. Snap it in. No problem. And even though it's old, still got airbag system on it. They were big on safety. Now start her up, back her up. And remember, it's a German car. You have to turn it completely off and completely on to start it because they have kind of a safety interlock on it. Now, there's no backup camera, so we got to look, and away we go. That's one smooth machine. Got a relatively wide stance. These things really handle quite well. And considering there's no speed limit in the Autobahn, that's a pretty good thing. <laughs> of course, they have phenomenal brakes, even as old as they are. They're rather large, and they have no problem stopping this thing. Oh, here we go down to back of road. Anybody over there? No. Anybody over there? No. All right, up the hill to the little drag strip. People were even flying down this road in their Chrysler vans. He was going a little over the 20 mile an hour speed limit at that corner there. So here we come and let's see what's left of this V8 engine and transmission. Okay, we will come to a stop. There's nobody behind us. On your mark, get set, go. Listen to that engine. Woo, sweet sound. Look, we did 70 rather quickly. And as we go down the road, I don't hear any worn wheel bearing, transmission line or anything. After all, this thing's only got 94,000 miles on it. You know, it's barely broken in. It's rare you're gonna find one of these babies with such low mileage on it. But hey, the guy owned a funeral home. I guess he only took short trips to the cemetery. <laughs> got passage speed. We're doing 45 before it. Look at that speedometer pickup. This baby still got horsepower left in it. It may be 31 years old, but it's still pretty quick. Yeah, it's still a handling car. Okay, it says go 20 miles an hour. Well, we're not going to slow down. We'll just see how it handles. La, 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 la. We're not even slowing down. And here we go. No problem at all. I could have gone twice the speed, but it's somebody else's car, so <laughs> I'll play it conservative here. And here we go through the light. Around the corner. These things are still a lot of fun to drive. Steering wheel is crooked, but that's just because somebody didn't align it right. They got to recenter the steering wheel. And it's no big deal for any alignment guy. I mean, he just got this thing and he's got less than two grand in it, so you can't expect perfection in a car like this for two grand. It's such a shame they don't build solid cars like this. They got too much plastic crap. The quality control, especially the ones put together in the United States, isn't all that great, but in this baby that's made in Germany in 1991, they knew what they were doing. To run like this all these years later. Oh, the steering wheel's crooked. Look, man, no hands. It still goes pretty good. Hit the brakes. It's not pulling one way or the other. Now, you might well wonder what this does. Look, what's this? Well, that's where you can store your cassette music tapes so you can put them in here to play them later on. That's what that is. All right, they really designed it well. I gotta give them the credit. So they're having a blast in the past that still is a blast to drive. Now, considering that he's got less money in this thing than it would cost to buy four tires for a brand new Mercedes. <laughs> And that one probably was made in Alabama. I take this one any day of the week. You know, it's rare you're gonna find one with little mileage like that in such good shape, but that shows how solid those things were made, even though it was decades ago that they were built. It's unfortunate they don't build them like that today. Too much plastic, too much computer crap. They cost a fortune to upkeep. They cost a fortune to buy parts for. And these older ones, and a lot more simplicity to them, a lot more solid build. It's still rolling down the road pretty good. And for the money he's got in it, hey, he can have a lot of fun. Plus, guess what? The insurance is dirt cheap. We don't pay much for a car. <laughs>
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.